Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is a Kriegsmesser from Lands Connect Emporium, colorfully dubbed by them the Monster. And it is on loan to me from Sword Friend Ian, which is, uh, brings me to my disclaimer section, if you will. One, this is a loaner product from a private Sword Friend citizen, if you will, who sent this along with a number of Lands Connect Emporium products for me to review and play with. And he's been very patient. So right away, special thanks to Sword Friend Ian for lending this to me to review and being very patient. Uh, I saved the biggest <laughs> biggest one of them for last. This is the last one, and then they will make the long journey home back to Sword for Indian. But anyway, uh, so I'm not going to destroy it. It's somebody else's property. He did give me license to sharpen it, to play with it, to push it a little bit, but not to, to break it or abuse it. So that's what you're going to see in the video. The intent here is to, to show you, you know, some bits and bobs, fits and features, and hopefully you can determine if it's worth your money or not. Uh, also worth noting, I don't study historic European martial arts. This sword is very unfamiliar to me. That'll be present throughout... <laughs> throughout the video, you'll see my undiscomfort, un uncomfortability is in the word, discomfort in moving this sword around. It does not feel to me like something that is self-evident to move or just immediately feels a part of your arm or hand. Uh, it feels like something that a person needs to study with to move proficiently, and I, I don't have that study, and I didn't, I didn't invest it in this sword. Um, so you'll see that throughout. I also do want to note that this sword uh, is used by Sword Friend Ian. He unapologetically says these are not safe queens. So some of the roughness that you will see on the sword uh, may be from a life well lived and loved by Sword Friend Ian who, who unapologetically, again, uses, wears, uh, and cuts with the sword. So there's some, some usage sign of things here which may not be representative of what you would see from Lands Connect Emporium. But it does also bring me to a point that I want to address right away too, and that is that this sword does not have an inch on it that doesn't look... Uh, perfect basically there's no perfect lines there's asymmetry abound uh there's roughness machine marks and things like that that are are present throughout the sword which are undoubtedly not just from sword friend ian but from the manufacturing process and i don't want to harp on it on every uh every point of the review i will touch on it when i where i feel appropriate but it's present on on every every inch of the sword and so if that's something that bothers you and is a deal breaker then i suppose you know right at right at the start there too the last bit that I should caveat here is that this is not a common offering from Lands Connect Emporium. It is something special ordered. Uh, I'll put dimensions and all that kind of stuff in the description down below if you want to get something similar, but it, it's not one of their common models. It was a custom order from Sword Friendly, and it's also configured in the left-hand variety, which I didn't find uncomfortable at all, but it's worth noting that this is the left-handed version because Sword Friend Ian is a lefty. Anyway, uh, that's enough caveats. I'm going to actually get on with the reviewing. Uh, to start, I'm going to put it in, in the price point so that you know what that is, and it is $2,200 with the scabbard. And I'm not sure exactly where that divide is, uh, which part of that is the scabbard and which part of that is the sword, because typically Lands Connect Emporium offers them separately. But the basic gist is that this type of configuration will cost you roughly $2,200. So that's a frame of mind I'm going to be thinking about it in as I compare it to other swords, which, frankly, there aren't a lot to compare it to. <laughs> There's not a, a whole lot of Kriegsmasters that are offered out there, um, and I have, I have little experience with those things. But I have, have had a little bit of experience, so um, I, can, I can make a few comparisons. Anyway, uh, to start the review, I usually begin with a pommel, and in this case, this particular messer actually has what looks like a pommel, in that the tang of the blade doesn't run through the pommel. There is a, a metal cap at the end, which appears to be peened on at the very tip. So. Again, there's some hammer marks and stuff on the peen, but the pommel is actually one of the cleanest pieces on the sword. And it has some elegance and depth here that uh, that I really appreciate. One, the kind of well running down the scales on the side of the blade run through the pommel. Aesthetically, I happen to like that appearance. Uh, it has something that prevents your fingers from going on, this little beak that comes out here. It stops your, your pinky, but it's also comfortable to grab. I don't notice that if I really clamp down on it, I mean, I can feel purchase. I can feel like I have good grip retention. It's doing its job, but it's also not ripping my skin apart as, as I'm doing it. There's also little wells and swells uh, that run around the pommel, and I happen to really, really like the overall aesthetic of it and the execution on here. I think it makes a handsome adornment on the on the actual sword itself. Anyway, uh, the pommel does have little, you know, slats here. I can kind of get a fingernail underneath it. You can probably hear. So there are some transitional gaps here. Uh, nothing that's terribly problematic as I swung it around. Nothing bit me or anything like that. But I can get a, a fingernail between a few things. So. Uh, that may be a concern for moisture or something like that. Some of it is, is filled with epoxy or some sort of resin, but in some areas it doesn't look like it's filled with the same type of epoxy or resin. So worth noting that the transitions are, are a little odd there. Now, uh, the way it lines up, this, uh, <laughs> this tang is extremely thick. You can see where it lines up with the slats here. This is a, a big piece of metal. 
uh, running all the way through, and I'm, I'm guessing that it's cut down, and then that's where the peen runs through. It doesn't wiggle at all either, so however they're fixing it in here, this pommel doesn't doesn't seem to, to move around at all, not just because of the peen. Sometimes if it's just round, it'll twist around, so I'm guessing they've done something to keep it uh, keep it in shape so that it's not going to twist. Given that it needs to line up with these, these wells to really uh, give the full effect of its intent, I'm, I'm glad to see that it hasn't developed any kind of wiggle over time. Uh, one thing to also note here is that you may see some lines on the blade. I, I've been taking measurements to put in the Sword Weapon Dynamics computer. Those measurements, again, will be linked down below. But if you see those Sharpie lines on here, that is, that is me, not from Lance Connect Emporium. All right, now I'm going to talk about the grip. So as we look at the grip, first dimensionally, one, it has some taper. It narrows towards the cross guard. It swells a little bit towards the pommel area. Uh, this direction, it narrows towards the the the, the cross as well. And then it swells in the middle and kind of tapers down a little bit towards where the pommel is, but ever so slightly. Uh, I really like the dark wood grip here. I like these brass pins or pegs in here. They're hollow incidentally, and I don't know why I see that so commonly on Messers. It is something that I see pretty frequently, uh, but I, I don't know if lanyards were attached or if they used it to wrap in cord or if there was some sort of more applicable reason other than aesthetics, but if nothing else, it's certainly handsome. I do feel though, um, the brass is a little bit higher on some of these pegs than uh, than the wood. So I, I'm not scratching any skin off, but I can I can feel a slight transitional thing there that I'd, I'd rather not feel. Anyway, handsome grip, very thick tang. I love the finger wells as well. I do want to note that this sword at nearly five pounds is, is, has some mass, and that's a point that I'll make several times throughout this, but these finger wells really let me feel like I'm in control of the weapon. Uh, I, I had wet hands at one point swinging it around. I at no point felt like it was going to fly away from me or shift in my grip. And these finger wells, maybe even some of the, the, uh, the abrasiveness of these little little peg areas here really helped me feel like it's locked in my hands when I'm using a bare hand or when I was using a glove. What I would like to note though is that this does feel comfortable in the hands. Uh, there is a lot to move around. It's a long, <laughs> it's a long sword, a long grip, and uh, at the same time it feels it feels controllable. A lot of effort went into how this sword should feel. A lot of effort was put into reducing weight where it could, and this grip. I don't think is any exception. How how this feels in the hand is really, it's remarkable how nimble it is for the size <laughs> the size that this monster is. Anyway, um, the grip gets a thumbs up from me. I happen to like it. I also like the brass transition here. I like these little brass rings. Uh, it, it it'll bring me into the overall hilt, which I'll touch on a little bit after I touch after I talk about this cross guard here. So, uh, cross guard has again hammer marks near the nagel area and what it's done is worth kind of noting and that is that this gap that i often criticize on a number of manufacturers for being too big is actually pretty narrow on this sword because it's been compressed shut <laughs> so as a result this cross guard doesn't move around and this this uh this gap in the cross guard has been hammered hammered to a, a smaller and acceptable size it it actually is one of the more narrow gaps but it's compression fit or percussively percussively fit if you will uh, the cross guard has these nice little brass bobs at the at the end, which appear to be peened on. And oddly enough, they have these these stripes, which don't appear to be cosmetic, or these little uh, gaps that you know. I'm not and I'm not quite sure what they are, but it looks like there were three pieces of brass that were welded together to make this little bob at the end. That's at least what I'm suspecting, because it it looks like there are three pieces soldered together rather than um, rather than having this little mark that I'm seeing be decorative in some way. It looks like a, a solder weld, maybe. Uh, this side only, I can only make out one, but there's maybe a faint line of, of three here. Either way, I like the little brass bobs on the end of the guards. They're not perfectly symmetrical, nor are the twists here, but they're close in, in, in a, apparent look. Um, you have to be kind of, you have to be looking at them to see that they're not symmetrical anyway. I think this guard incidentally might be forged as well, so I think Lance Connect Emporium noted uh, at least some time ago that the guards that they make were at one point forged and then they moved away and started doing casting on some of the guards. This one I would speculate is forged, but that's that's uh, speculation on my part. I suppose I could ask, but I haven't up until the point of this review. Uh, the nagel looks like it was a separate ring, or this ring anyway, was, was looks like a separate piece that was welded on and then cleaned up later. Uh, the nagel is run through the center here as well. Uh, it's worth noting that if I really push up my hand, I can I can definitely cause discomfort. There's some rough spots here that would bite into me. I'm not usually holding it choked up on the guard, but if I did, then it would be a little uncomfortable. The nagel doesn't have any sharp spots on it, but it's it's uh, got acute enough angles that I could 
I could certainly hurt myself if I was really throwing some, some swings out there with chutzpah and the snaggle was jamming into my knuckles with a bare hand. In gloves or something, it's probably less of an issue. Anyway, uh, the guard is also really big. I like these little bobs on the end. One, it feels like you could be aggressive with them and punch and use them in some way. But also, uh, I tend to whack myself with these large cross guards. I'm not used to using swords and with large, large cross guards. And the style of swordsmanship that I do use tends to bring the sword pretty close to my forehead. And so I tend to buff myself in the noodle with these things pretty commonly. So the fact that they're not sharp, I mean that they could be offensive, <laughs> I guess is good, <laughs> but also uh, it, it prevents me from poking my own eye out with them. So uh, I like that. And I think overall the, the hilt is, is handsome. I would like to see a little bit of brass down in the pommel here. So the little knobs at the end and then these pins add some color and contrast to it, but I don't see anything on the pommel. It'd be nice to have something on the pommel that was done in brass. Even if the pommel was done in brass, I think that might might have been a handsome change uh, aesthetically. Anyway, uh, that brings me to the scabbard. So this is a big honkin' scabbard from Lands Connect Emporium. And again, I don't know what the divide is between sword versus scabbard with the total package being $2,200. Uh, finish wise, there's a gap here that doesn't perfectly line up with the scabbard. So debris or water, something might get in there. It totally just falls out. It's, it's not snug in there and that might be able to be solved with a shim, but it, it, uh, pretty freely falls out. And I don't know what you'd, I don't know what the expectation is with a sword like this. Honestly, do you want it to be more free or not? The likelihood that it's going to fall over if you bend at the hip seems less because there's a lot of mass down here and I didn't have any problem. I didn't wear it very much in fairness, but I didn't have any problem with it falling out. Anyway, other notes on the scabbard. There's a ruggedness to Lands Connect Emporium scabbards that are actually handy because as I look down the scabbard here, I don't see, I can't tell the difference between what might be inconsistency in the staining and what might be an errant watermark or spilled drink or something like that. Uh, it has a ruggedness that I think holds up well and adds character over time, but there are little imperfections, ripples, things like that. And the stitch along the back is very apparent. You can see that it wiggles around and waves and obviously the stitching used is also high contrast with the white over the brown. The next bit to show is this leather piece that comes from Lands Connect Emporium. They have a few different harness options. Uh, for a sword like this, I might want a two-piece harness though. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, uh, right now this one's a bit on the loose side, but it can be tightened up, I believe. And I happen to like how these braids look. Again, I did walk around with this just a little bit and I didn't have it fall out or do anything problematic. And I did bend over at the hip and it didn't fall out of the scabbard. But um, this being on the, the looser side, not having a two-part harness system and the fact that the blade doesn't really have any, any retention itself makes me nervous because now I've sharpened this sword to uh, a razor sharpness. <laughs> and if it falls out, it's a five pound, five foot razor blade. So it's a... It's a nervy thing. It'd be tough to catch and stop. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the blade, the pointy pointy stabby part. Things to note here first finish. Uh, it's in a kind of a rough satiny finish. It has tool markings and rough spots on it. It has three very prominent fullers that uh, kind of taper off in, in different spots on either side, but also at different lengths and it gives a handsome appearance. Uh, the sword has, you know, it's actually pretty rigid for a sword its size. It, it flexes, but it, for the amount of distal taper it has, it's actually still pretty rigid. Um, and all those measurements, which you can't necessarily see in the camera so well, are down below. The surface has more ripples than a lot of the other Lands Connect Emporium pieces that I've seen, so it is worth noting that there's there's a bit more uh, ripple effect in the in the at least in the surface of the steel. It also didn't come particularly sharp, and Adam, when I was doing an interview with the folks at Lands Connect Emporium, mentioned that a more obtuse angle was more appropriate for the initial intention or usage of this sword. Sword for Nian gave me the okay to sharpen the sword up, which I've done, and it now has a razor edge, and it was actually, it wasn't that far off of it, honestly. It was very easy to, to keen up. It didn't take a whole lot of time or energy to do. Um, anyway, the sword itself, is well big and imposing it has more distal taper than it does kind of profile taper at least up into the tip and it's large and imposing and overall <laughs> it's it's handsome and it i guess i don't know just the it's a very scary looking sword to me it has a, a very daunting appearance and overall it's pretty cool I, I find i find it to be handsome at least in appearance uh, but i suppose that brings me to how does it move around and i'll admit here that i don't have the skill really to move it around so i do study how to move swords but this one in particular, it seems like a big gap in my skill is using uh, the sword's momentum to redirect it and reposition. It's not a thing that I typically do in the swordsmanship that I study, and uh, and I notice it 
a lot here. So this sword is five pounds. That's that's a heavy sword. But with the point of balance, roughly five inches from the guard, or a little bit more, it it's not that uncomfortable. And I've had swords in my hand that are, are very similar. Katana are very similar to a five-inch point of balance. So it's not unfamiliar in some positions. And here, if I keep my hands kind of close to my, to my core, I, I feel like I have tip control. I could at least discern between your head and your chest and kind of get the point where I need it to be. I have some point control from this position. I could move it around. I could preserve the center line with mass. I feel like I could push really easily. Uh, and I could, I could control the center line comfortably from here with thrusts and maybe with some, some push cuts because the curve lends itself to it. Uh, in, in kind of a more broad cut, if I throw the tip out, I actually feel like I have a good amount of control here. The, the leverage here allows me to push that sword out, to throw it out, and it's not that hard to actually generate momentum here. I don't think it's actually uh, too challenging, even given the mass. But stopping it, that's where I really start to get fatigued. Or if I'm keeping my hands further out I, and really taking advantage of the reach here, that's where I really begin f getting fatigued, and especially as I try to stop the momentum the sword has. Uh, and keep the sword between me and my opponent, I, I become fatigued really easy and it feels really cumbersome and clunky. And I feel like I'm, you know, that it's not a very effective weapon that way. But if you threw those swords out, the sword out and were able to redirect and reposition it with the sword's momentum, I just don't, I don't do that. I'm not practiced with it. It's uncomfortable for me. And I really, I feel like I'm going to whack the floor, you know, chip the sword on a rock or something like that, hit some things around me that I don't want to hit. Uh, so I, I stopped doing that pretty quickly. So it's, this isn't the sword for me to get those skills with or practice with, uh, but it feels like in a more capable <laughs> practitioner's hands, uh, this wouldn't be so bad. The shallower point of balance, the attempt that Lands Connect Emporium put into uh, reducing weight and keeping the, the sword in balance and proportion so that it does feel nimble, nimble is there. I recognize that in more capable hands, this would be uh, more formidable than it is in mind. That said, or in mine, I should say, uh, that said, where it is, uh, what I can do with it is, is actually kind of impressive. For a sword that's 5 pounds and 10 inches longer than I'm used to, I'm surprised it's as agile as it is. Uh, they dubbed it the monster, but, I, you know, it's a fair, <laughs> it's a fair name, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's actually a tamer monster than I expected. So that brings us to cutting. Now, interestingly enough, I tested the sword prior to sharpening it and then after sharpening it, though after sharpening it, I tested on fewer targets. Uh, I tested it first, you know, pool noodles and water bottles. Pool noodles just kind of batted them around and it, it didn't have the edge angle to really shear right through them. I imagine if I swung hard enough, it could probably cut, but I, I didn't find it very effective at cutting pool noodles. Uh, likewise, in water bottles, it would cut through some water bottles and some it would just smash or bat them around. Uh, it was really more smashing water bottles than cutting. The, the bottles that it cut really well, you know, might be able to be cut well with a hockey stick. So there, I don't think it was really showcasing what the sword could do, but it's important to know that it didn't have a particularly uh, sharp edge. So as soon as I brought it to a tatami mat, though, it sang right through the tatami mat with a dull edge, which is kind of surprising because tatami mats typically need uh, a really keen edge to, to sail right through them, at least on the used Japanese tatami that I happen to be using. And this one just moved right through that mass, the, the edge angle and alignment. It was easy enough to index, easy enough to get out there, and the mass just carried it through, and it didn't bat the tatami around at all. It cut very effectively, which I found really, really surprising. It didn't... Uh, <laughs> I kind of expected it to thump into the tatami and not cut through it and just leave a giant <laughs> wedge, <laughs> uh, cause the tatami to implode slightly, maybe. Uh, but it didn't. It actually cut very, very effectively. So I, I would venture a guess with a sharper edge it would do that. It would cut more mats, but they are few and far between at the moment. Um, so uh, also in testing, it's worth noting that I took some rolled paper and I covered it with a um, uh, like a shirt or something like that, just some fabric, and I tried to cut with this particular sword. It didn't cut really well. It kind of bashed the paper in it, knocked the target over. It would be deadly, but at the same time, it didn't really shear the fabric in two the same way it did uh, with just the bare tatami. In contrast, some of the other Lands Connect Emporium blades with keener edges cut through the fabric and, you know, through the, the mat, uh, but I was also, or rather the rolled paper, but I was more proficient, or at least those blades felt maybe more familiar to me. Um, with the sharp red, so after bringing it out, keening it up, and really putting uh, a really, you know, nice, keen, pretty obscene edge on it, I brought it back out to do water bottle cutting, and what I found was, was interesting, and that was it didn't really cut that much better. It cut a little bit better, um, but it was still smashing the bottles around, and, and I, I found it funny that the edge, the blade itself, um, my edge alignment must be terrible, right? <laughs> because it has an edge sufficient to cut through water bottles now, but as I'm throwing it out there, I'm smacking the water bottles all around. 
Uh, and I would venture, I guess, that there's a look at my Tatami footage, my edge alignment probably isn't great. So I think the sword is doing some of the work for me. The mass is carrying through, the, the flexibility is orientating itself a little bit to just move through the target, but when it comes to a wall of metal, it, it's, it's still just smacking, smacking it around. It's not uh, cutting into it, the edge isn't biting in. And it hasn't dulled at all, and I put an obscenely sharp edge on it, but it's just not, I didn't find it to be much better a cutter. I was kind of expecting it to sail right through things, and in some cases it did, uh, but it will equally just bat them around, and that shows that, again, uh, I'm not terribly comfortable or proficient with this, with this sword. All right, sword friends, so at this point, the high-res video, the photos, the seeing me cutting for what that's worth is hopefully giving you enough information to make up your own mind on if it's worth your hard-earned money or not. Uh, me personally, do I personally think it's worth $2,200? Yes, for a certain <laughs> a certain group of people, absolutely. If you're a Messer fan like Sword Friend Ian is, uh, there's just this is an underserved category. There's not a ton of other options. It's not like there's this one and then 10 other companies to choose from. You pretty much have to get custom swords made like this if you want anything this size, this scale. Uh, and for for that as an option, I think yes, uh, the fact that it it was a little bit more bespoke to sort than Ian, it's a cool custom size, uh, that it comes with a scabbard in the twenty two hundred dollars. I think it's a, a reasonable value for the money. Obviously, there's crudeness and there's imperfections and some other stuff going on with the sword. If you don't like that, then obviously it's going to be hard to justify the money. But if you don't mind it or you happen to enjoy that kind of handmade aesthetic, then uh, then yeah, it's it's a competently made sword. It has a lot of attention to where the balance points should be and how it should feel in the hand, or at least I'm assuming it does because it's a five pound monster that I can hold with one hand, move around, and I would feel confident in at least getting the tip where I want it to be. So it feels like it's, it's reasonably well made. I struck it at things, it held up well, it has a nice ting to it and the, the sign of quality, right? But I, I do think it's a good product. For me personally, I, I don't have a huge amount of experience dealing with really large messers. Uh, I would I would personally actually like the arms and armor variety that Swordsman Ian sent me some time ago. If I was choosing between which one to spend $2,200 on, I think it would probably lean that direction. They're very different swords and they're not fair to compare because they're not, they're not the same. One's much larger and based on a historical example. This might be, I'm not exactly sure, um, but they're very different swords. But at the same time, they were similar in price, uh, similar in build quality. The arms and armor I thought was a little bit more refined and had some details on it that I happen to like just a little bit more. So I, I would probably lean that direction. Um, but this is still a very compelling sword, very fun to move around, competently made. And so, yes, I, I think it's worth $2,200. I would probably go a little bit of a different direction, but uh, that doesn't mean that it's, it's a bad sword at all. Anyway, hopefully, again, you've got enough information to make up your own mind. That's all I've got on this one. Hopefully, it's been interesting. If you have any questions, throw them in the commentary down below, and I will endeavor to answer. Uh, special thanks again to Swordfin Ian for both sending me these swords, letting me playing around with them, giving me the okay to sharpen and experiment with them, and for your abundance of patience. It is, uh, it is much appreciated, and I hope the other sword friends out there watching this content are also grateful, because without his patience and generosity, I wouldn't be able to babble on about these cool things. So... Anyway, that's all I've got, though. Uh, cheers, and thanks for watching.